Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. My name is Mkolisi, the son of Nube, and uh, I, I am here to say my little bit about what you've already heard about, which is the nullification of uh, the presidential contestation of former ZANU-PF political commissar, uh, Mr. Sevier Kasukwere. Most of you know him as an exiled Zimbabwean uh, who left the country after the coup of uh, 2017, that is November 2017. You will know that uh, Kasukwere was a member of the so-called G40 um, faction of ZANU-PF which stood uh, in antagonism with uh, the eventual victors that as the Lacoste uh, who rolled the, the tanks and took out Robert Mugabe and at the same time members of the G40 were forced into exile and these include Professor Jonathan Moyo, they include uh, Patrick Shua who is the former Minister of Science and Technology in the cabinet of Robert Mugabe the late former president of Zimbabwe. So now you would know that uh, Kasukwere, having stayed in exile for some time, had made clear his intention that he's going to challenge for the presidency of Zimbabwe, that is to challenge the incumbent who is President Emerson Nangagwa. But following a court case that was uh, launched, uh, Mr. Kasukwere has since been uh, but from contesting uh, as president of Zimbabwe. And uh, that is because uh, somebody took the case to court and contested the acceptance of Kasuku Were's uh, application as one of the contestants. Now, the court has nullified his, uh, his uh, candidature for the presidency but now what we are told is that uh, that Kasukwere's lawyers are taking the case further to the supreme court which means that uh, he is not taking it lying down he wants to contest and yesterday he tweeted himself that president emerson nangakwa is beaten more than he can chew because the circumstances that are going to follow we don't know what those circumstances are but he will not be able to handle them he is saying that uh, nangakwa has made the biggest mistake of his political life. Now, uh, I would not want us to preempt, or I would not want to preempt what the court's decision is going to be, the Supreme Court's decision is going to be, but I just want to explain the legalities of his suspension because partly this is included in the Constitution, which uh, apparently Kasukwe knew about which he signed up to when he was still a member of Zanu PF. You'd remember that uh, Morgan Swangirai and the MTC back then were fighting for a review, for a reform of not only the security sector but also the electoral laws of Zimbabwe. And surprisingly, the same Kasukwere now who is challenging these laws told at some point Mok and Swangirai to go hang. He said Swangirai should go to hell and go hang. This was him. This exposes the lack of foresight by these people who, when they are part of the ruling elite, when they are part of the ruling class, when they are part of the ruling party, believe that rights should only be enjoyed by themselves. But when they are taken out, they begin now to gravitate towards the pro-democracy forces, yet in effect or in fact, when they are part of the ruling party or they, when they were part of the ruling party, they believed that they were untouchable and they, would, they stood against any reforms. So I'm going to read from the Zimbabwean constitution, which was passed uh, in uh, 2013 by the GNU. You'd remember that there was a constitutional uh, rewriting process. It was taken all over by the COPAC for people to be to have some explanations to some of the provisions of the new constitution before it was passed into law in 2013. And this is in sub in section 91, 
subsection 1 uh, the qualifications for election as president and vice president of Zimbabwe I hope you are going to listen to this there are certain provisions uh, subsection 1 says a person qualifies for election as president or appointment as vice president if he or she uh, subsection 1 then subsection A is a Zimbabwean citizen by birth or descent Sevia Kasukure by being uh, a Zimbabwean by uh, a city, citizen by birth qualifies subsection B says has attained the age of 40 years we know his age he qualifies is ordinarily resident in Zimbabwe that is subsection C we know that after the coup of 2017 uh, Kasukure was hounded out of the country and has been resident there he tried to go back and was arrested taken to court and uh, we have to verify if he did not uh, because there is allegations that he also uh, ran away again while he was on bail but that one it has to be verified because there are believed to be two cases two court cases against him that he didn't see through and he ran away into exile subsection d says is a registered voter so these two the last subsections that is subsection c is ordinarily resident in zimbabwe we know that he hasn't been in zimbabwe for some time and d is a registered voter we don't no, if because you will remember that there was a delimitation that was done and there was a new voter registration exercise that was done uh, in the 20 there was a new voter registration uh, which was done in 2018 just before the elections there's been another one after uh, the first election after the coup that was after the 2018 elections there was also another voter registration exercise and a delimitation that was done so we don't think that Kasukwere went back to register after that because he has been in exile for some time and in the nullification of the of his candidate by the high court uh, or the lawyer who represented uh, Loved in Mangwana who took Kasukwere to court says that one of the qualifications uh, of candidates for presidential election that is according to the Electoral Act now is that they ought to be registered as a voter and the law is that if you are not ordinarily resident in Zimbabwe for at least 18 months now that is what the 18 months is provided for by the Electoral Act on top of what the Constitution says then you are deemed to have ceased to be a registered voter and so Mr. Kasukwere ceased to be by operation of law to be a registered voter and consequently ceased to be qualified to run for, for or occupy office of the President of the Republic. And so the court has declared that the acceptance of his nomination papers by the nomination court sitting at Harare was invalid and that consequently he cannot run for the office of the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. So we have to be very clear about that. We are not trying to preempt what is going to happen at the High Court, but when the Electoral Act is taken into uh, trial by the Supreme Court, they consider what the Constitution says. And now the Constitution, as I've already read, seems to be in tandem with what the Electoral Court says, but we're going to leave it there our main uh, question is how is this then going to affect uh, the contest which is mainly between what i mean uh, emerson nangakwa the incumbent and nelson chamisa of triple c who is the main challenger because there were some hopes in some quarters that sevia kasukwere is going to take away some of the votes from emerson nangakwa and leave uh, Nelson Chamisa with some bit of a leeway to go and then win the presidency or that Kasukwere will split the vote and lead to a runoff in which then Nelson Chamisa was likely going to win. Is this what we also believe? Well, personally, I don't believe so because what I think is that uh, 
without formidable structures, without uh, any structures in Zimbabwe, Kasukwera was going to find it very tough, or even if he succeeds at the High Court, I don't foresee him getting anything above one percent because he doesn't have any structures he doesn't have anyone campaigning him i mean for him uh anywhere other than uh himself and we haven't seen him his strength in terms of uh pulling the numbers to his rallies he hasn't helped any rally we haven't seen anybody who is doing it on his behalf so i foresee another Bosana more scenario uh, where you will contest as an independent and Dismally lose the election is another uh, damn sweep, if you were to ask me. So I don't see how this was going to affect uh, Nelson Chamisa, whether Kasukwere is there or is not there. I don't foresee any uh, way that this is going to affect the contest between Nelson Chamisa and Emerson Nangao. And you would also remember that in the 2018 elections, Robert Mugabe gave Chamisa his blessings and even told his uh, supporters to vote Nelson Chamisa. But at the end of the day, still, he didn't change the outcome of the election because ZANU-PF supporters uh, would always vote their party regardless of who needs it. Uh, they would still vote it. Uh, it's different from the Simbamakoni uh, era or the Simbamakoni attempt of 2008 where we would also remember that other than the Bora Musango, there was a, a, some backing behind Kasukwero of a mass movement that was the MTC led by Professor Adam Tambara. And most of the votes that uh, Makoni got, he got from where Professor Adam Tambara's party, the MTC, got uh, its own votes. You remember that uh, Adam Tambara's party got 10 constituencies. Uh, mostly in Matipele land and these are the people who also voted uh, Simba Makoni because Mdambara having failed to reach an agreement with Mok and Swangirai uh, for their parties to go together for the presidential uh, ballot um, ended up saying that he's no longer going to contest but he's supporting the candidature of Simba Makoni. We haven't had anyone uh, who leads what is, can be said to be a mass movement saying that they are backing uh, Sefia Kasukwere. So there is no way that this is going to affect the fort. So this is what we had for you. We await because it's just less than a month away or barely more than a month away uh, for us to go to the polls. But uh, we are keeping a keen eye uh, on the outcome of the court appeal by Sefia Kasukwere and those that are backing him. Thank you very much. Please tell us your views, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. Thank you.